And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. And welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. Today marks the seventh anniversary of the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq. On March 19, 2003, the United States began dropping bombs on Baghdad as thousands of U.S. forces poured across Iraq's borders. Seven years later, the occupation continues. In that time, over 4,300 American soldiers have died. Many thousands more have been wounded. As many as 650,000 Iraqis have been killed, with the number of wounded unknown. Meanwhile, Iraq is suffering the worst refugee crisis in the world today. According to the United Nations, more than 4.2 million Iraqis have fled the country, many of them to neighboring Jordan and Syria. Another 1.9 million are internally displaced. And seven years after the invasion, the U.S. occupation of Iraq continues. Last month, the top U.S. commander in Iraq, General Ray Odierno, said the U.S. is preparing contingency plans to delay the withdrawal of all combat forces in Iraq if violence or political instability increases in the aftermath of this month's parliamentary elections. Under President Obama's current plan, the U.S. has vowed to cut the number of troops in Iraq in half, to 50,000 by August. A full withdrawal is scheduled to occur by the end of 2011. Well, to mark the seventh anniversary, we turn to a perspective rarely heard in the U.S. media, an Iraqi woman living in Baghdad. Yanar Mohammed is president of the Organization of Women's Freedom in Iraq. I reached her by phone yesterday in Baghdad and began by asking her to describe the situation in Iraq seven years after the U.S. invasion of her country. The situation now, after uh, the end of seven years of invasion, uh, is at a point where we have many questions at hand. The first one is we're waiting now every day for the final result of the elections, and there there is some uh, uh, competition between the prime minister's list and Ayad Alawi's and. Uh, and other groups, but mainly they are mostly the same groups that have started off uh, in the first place. Um, the other side of the issue, which uh, not many people are talking about, is uh, the economic uh, agenda in Iraq. Uh, uh, the privatization, the heavy privatization that's happened in Iraq in the last two years, where uh, tens of thousands of workers have been laid off uh, with no work to go to, with no social insurance to support them, while in the same time there is an economic agenda of uh, supporting uh, foreign investment uh, in a way where there is protection for foreign investment, but there is no labor law, no uh, unemployment insurance for people, um, and in the same time, uh, we are being surprised by the Ministry of Finance telling the Iraqis that we need to have a loan from the World Bank, which will put the Iraq policies under uh, such pressure, and it is a surprise to everybody because the revenues of oil are so high that we do not really need, need a, a loan from the World Bank. So uh, economically, it's a uh, roller coaster here in Iraq. Privatization, uh, no security for the working class, uh, much investment for uh, multinational companies, and in the same time, a democracy which uh, has brought forward groups which are transformations of the first political forces that started off with militias, but now they are politicians and they are sitting in the green zone. So uh, it's a very strange scene that we are in Iraq now. Um, high poverty among women, very high poverty, especially among the uh, the millions of population, the millions of uh, widows of war and orphans of war who do not have uh, sufficient uh, social insurance to support them. And there are no social programs to tell us what to do with these millions who do not have a place to go or uh, uh, economy to support them. And at the same time, the, uh, the oil law has been signed already, uh, big uh, uh, investments for foreign companies. Uh, we do not have any promises of a good labor law 
and the Constitution has established a state of inequality for women. There is a, an article in the Constitution, Article Number 41, which has cancelled, almost cancelled uh, for good, the civil rights, the minimal civil rights which women had under Saddam, uh, under what was called the personal status law, and it is uh, these uh, civil rights are being uh, substituted with uh, Islamic Sharia and other uh, religious uh, laws that are uh, of uh, uh, minorities in Iraq. There is a quota for ethnicities. Uh, uh, according to, uh, 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 to ethnic groups, uh, some for Christians, some for other religions, for Assyrians, and this was a message to the Iraqis that that uh, representations are upon religions, upon uh, uh, sectarian lines, and uh, upon ethnicities, and not upon uh, political affiliations. So it's finally, after uh, eight years, uh, the Bush's uh, agenda of representing the Iraqis upon very uh, backward uh, representations has become a reality, and it's, uh, uh, it's a very bad form of democracy that we have to live in in Iraq. The ethnicities have uh, grouped themselves upon ethnic lines, and it's only such a situation needs only a little bit of sparkling to start uh, a civil war any time. It could happen any time. You know, Mohammed, can you compare uh, the war under Bush and under the current President Obama? Inside Iraq, a citizen, a citizen inside Iraq, a woman in Iraq, uh, or a worker, or even an official, you would absolutely see no difference. We did not feel any difference inside here. People are so exhausted economically that uh, there isn't much hope that uh, something very good could happen soon. There are hopes that maybe on the long run we could, our struggles could get us something, but for the time being, the, the uh, extreme privatization of Iraq, the oil revenues that go to places we don't know where they are, 80% uh, unemployment among the women of Iraq, the extreme poverty that's pushing women to, uh, to, to being trafficked and prostituted. It's all a situation that's overwhelming. I, it would be hard for me to have a very clear, uh, clear vision right now. We just want to have some uh, relative security so as to organize our ranch for the coming times. And we are optimistic that if the American, if the U.S. Army leaves us, we may be able to have uh, the dynamics of the people and to make the wheels go uh, the other way around, uh, to the way that will help us have uh, claim our resources again, our oil again, and our lives again. Yanar Mohammed, president of the Organization of Women's Freedom in Iraq. We are speaking to her in Baghdad. When we come back, we'll go to Cindy Sheehan in Washington, D.C. Stay with us. Thank you. 